Megan Crowder immerses herself in her clients' industries. When you work with her, you shall ask the right questions and use your answers to craft engaging social media posts, media pitches, and press releases that will pique your audience's interests so they'll want to learn more. Her enthusiasm and competitive nature serve her well in the social media realm as she constantly looks for innovative ways to use the various platforms and she stays on top of all of this, which is constantly evolving in the marketing arena. In both work and life, Megan isn't one to stick to the status quo, but is always looking for a new approach or the next adventure. I have so enjoyed working with Megan Crowder, who is account manager and social media specialist at my agency, Marshall Communications. Welcome to the PR Maven podcast, a podcast all about growing your network and building your brand through traditional and digital networking techniques. I'm Nancy Marshall, the PR maven and CEO of Marshall Communications. I've been strengthening brands through PR for over 35 years, and now I'm celebrating the success of executives, influencers, business owners, and entrepreneurs from all around the world, all of whom have cultivated their brands and broadened their networks through traditional and digital networking methods. Each week, I interview one of these interesting and influential individuals and provide an opportunity for you, the PR Maven Nation, to gain insights from their strategies and stories. So stay tuned for this week's episode, and thanks for listening. Okay, Megan, so to kick things off, tell us about your career and how you got into it in the first place. All right. So thank you for having me, Nancy. Um, My name is Megan Crowder. I am a account manager and social media specialist at Marshall Communications. And I um, was introduced into PR and communications in the social media world in college. So I was looking for something to specialize in where I could really dive deep into several different businesses and not just one focus. And that's what PR is. It gives me the opportunity to work with many different businesses and not just have one focus. Even though my focus is social media, I get to apply it for other businesses. So I started at Northern Michigan University, and the PR and social media program there is great. I networked there and learned a lot about public relations and communications, but I also knew in the background that I wanted to focus more on social media. Yeah. So when you were actually starting out at Northern Michigan University in public relations, social media really wasn't quite as much of a thing as it is now. I mean, did you know back then Because I know you were also really involved with the PRSSA. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk a little bit about that and how much of that was social media versus just PR in general? Yeah. So when I first started out, it was mostly just learning about public relations and then networking. So I did go to um, Public Relations Student Society of America's conferences. So their national conference in D.C. my senior year really opened my eyes to social media more on the marketing side for businesses because it was just organic reach and just native starting out. And that's like around the time where it was starting to explode. So hearing from top practitioners in the field talk about how social media was going to be the next big thing was inspiring to me. Yeah. So for those listeners who don't really know what you mean by organic or native versus the other thing, which I think probably is paid, let's Mm -hmm. just talk a little bit about the definition. All right. So organic reach and native. So native is not using a third party app. You're natively posting. So you're just going on Facebook or Instagram and just putting a post out there. Uh, Versus a third party app would be something like Hootsuite, for example. Yep. So Hootsuite or the native version for like scheduling would be using the scheduling tool on Facebook and scheduling it. Okay. Yep. All right. So you learned about, I mean, by taking obviously classes at University of Northern Michigan, going to PRSSA, and also, I know you're a, you're a lifelong learner anyway, so you figure things out. 
<laughs> yes, I would say in college, I was learning about social media, but I was teaching myself how to do it. I was always on Facebook and then Instagram started and I was like, hmm, what is this? I learned that and then Snapchat and the different social media platforms. I was just using them for my personal use and then learning and reading and researching how to use them for businesses. Yeah. So when you're talking about businesses and their use of different platforms, I mean, I know there's Snapchat now and even TikTok and what do you think is kind of the next thing that businesses should be learning about and embracing? You never really know. There's going to be a new social media platform every day. You don't know if it's going to last. You know, it could be the next Instagram, it could be the next big thing. But it really matters just to focus on where your audience is for your business. So you want to make sure that you're selecting like one to two to start out with, that you know that your audience is there. And you're going to find that out by um, starting. So just natively posting, getting out there, and then looking at the insights and seeing who's actually um, engaging with my posts, who's liking my posts, who's following me, who's my brand followers. And then um, if you try, so say you're on Facebook and you're, you're posting about your business and you're not seeing reach and you're not seeing engagement, and then you go to your insights and it doesn't match your audience that you want to be talking to, then you have to change up your strategy and see where am I, where's my audience. Right. And if you were to say what kind of audience, for example, Facebook, that is now skewing a bit older. Isn't that right? I know a lot of grandparents, for example, are on Facebook because that's how they can see how their grandchildren are doing. That is correct. Yes. Yeah. And Instagram is skewing somewhat younger, although I know probably a lot of older people are getting on that too. So now probably... Younger people are going to other things like I mentioned TikTok which, and Snapchat. Mm -hmm. I'd say that Instagram, it is more millennials and it's also Gen Z. But these followers who started out with Instagram are getting older. They're still using that platform. So not saying that it's only younger on Instagram. It's all over the place. Right. Yeah. Well, if you had your career to do over again, is there anything you would do differently? Right now, no. All um, right. I wouldn't. Maybe pursue a master's degree right out of college, but I wanted to get my feet wet and um, get a little bit of experience in, yeah. in, ag in the agency world. I mean, I'm really thrilled because you graduated from college and you had a friend who was getting her master's degree at the University of Maine. So you you thought Maine sounded like a pretty cool place and you Googled go Googled public relations in Maine and found Marshall Communications. And uh, I, I remember when you first uh, reached out to us and I felt like I kind of kept sort of testing you like, okay, well, you know, we can't hire you without talking to you. So you talked with Charlene and me on the phone. And then I said, well, you'll have to get here. And you were like, always right on it. You're like, okay, I can fly there, you know, in the next week. And you, you were there like Johnny on the spot, you came and you showed up. And we met you and we were just so impressed. And then I said, well, you know, if we hire you, you're going to have to move here. And you said, okay, I can do that. And I think you went that very day and found an apartment. And uh, yeah, that's been how many years now? Four years. Four years. Yeah. yeah. If I am determined and I want something, I will get it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you and me, you and me. <laughs> It must be our swimming background, Nancy. Well, it's funny you mention that because uh, one of my very early mentors in the business, Dave Wood, who used to run the agency management roundtable, he's retired now. But I can remember him saying when I first got involved with the agency management roundtable, which is now Agency Management Institute, he specifically said swimmers make great account people because... There's two things. They're competitive, but they also know how to put their head down and do the work. And it's a combination. And I really, you know, because I was a swimmer, I wasn't quite the swimmer that you were. But actually, I've kind of rediscovered my love of swimming with the peaks to Portland this past <laughs> summer. And I, I really enjoyed training with you in Darascotta Lake. Yes, that was um, fun. That was fun. Um, and it was really helpful. But I would definitely say that swimmers make great account people for that ability, the two things, the um, teamwork, 
competitiveness, actually three things, <laughs> teamwork, competitiveness, and ability to just like put your head down and like, do the solitary work and I have to admit like I'm so social it's really hard for me sometimes but actually in hindsight after I finish a workout I'm like it's almost like meditation because you really do clear your mind when you're swimming I know like when I was training for peaks to Portland this summer I would just focus on the counting like all right if I'm trying to do 40 laps of the pool one 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 and then other thoughts kind of come in and out of my mind but but you just focus on the number. And uh, that's kind of a meditation technique. Yeah. And it ties into a marketing plan too. You have to really focus in on several aspects of the strategy. And so I tie that back into swimming too. Yeah. Well, that's great. Isn't it funny that we can make these parallels between swimming and marketing, but I think there's something to be said there. Mm -hmm. So Megan, can you give me an example of how PR and social media have helped to advance you personally? your organization, well, Marshall Communications or a client that you've worked with? Yeah, so personally, social media has helped me grow drastically. So it's gotten to me gotten me to where I am today. And then it's really helped clients. So my knowledge of social media um, practices and my willingness to learn more about what's going on in the industry for social media has really helped our clients meet certain goals. And I can sit down with a client and know after talking with them what their goals are and what platforms are going to help them reach their goals. So Megan, give me an example how PR and social media have helped to advance you personally, your organization, or a client. Social media has helped me drastically personally because it's really grown my career. So when I started out, it was like we were talking about earlier, organic and um, native. And now it's growing more to advertising and paid. So I am learning and it's growing me as a social media practitioner in my career. But it's also... um, helped our clients. My knowledge of social media has helped our clients reach their goals on social. Yeah. And one of the things that I love about it for our clients is that it's so measurable. Mm -hmm. And you are able to create these amazing measurement dashboards Mm -hmm. uh, to show both the engagement and the reach. I know with the state of Maine Office of Tourism, you have really uh, drastically increase the amount of engagement with our Instagram and our Facebook. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah. So when I started out um, four years ago at Marshall, I came in and I said, I know social media. This is what I want to work on. So one of my first projects was to grow the main office of tourism's Instagram account. And it actually... I don't know the exact number, but it was 3,000 followers. And now we're up to 90,000 plus. So So those efforts weren't all me. We do have an advertising company that we work with for the main office of tourism. But we grew it first organically. And then once we had that strong base, we could then put more advertising dollars behind our strategy. So that's a tip right there is before you put advertising dollars behind a certain platform, it's good to grow a base. And you mentioned before, uh, serving up the audience with content that they're looking for. Mm -hmm. So I know that you've started doing Instagram stories and you're going around the state of Maine. And do you want to talk about that? Yes. So when you're thinking about traveling, you want to see what you're going to experience. So you want to see those experiences. So one of the strategies that we have for the main office of tourism through Instagram stories is going around and it's called on the road segment. So showing um, the cool things that you can do here in Maine. And it's really awesome because I personally love outdoor rec. So I've been able to do a lot of cool things like hiking and um, going, well, one of my favorite things is I went up to Meta Whistla up in Kakajo. So we went to, it's an AMC outdoor lodge there and um, got to experience snowshoeing, which I've never done before. So that was fun. And you've done snowmobiling yes. with the Maine Snowmobile Association, whitewater rafting with Northern Outdoors. Yeah. So um, we have a really good partnership with Northern Outdoors. We've had them as a client before, but also um, on the Maine Office of Tourism side, um, 
getting to experience what they have to offer. It's a four season resort and it's really beautiful. So we get to showcase that for yeah. Visit Maine. So I, I just love these on the road segments that you're doing. And I think it's a, it's been a really great addition to our Instagram for the State of Maine Tourism Office. Yes. And, and people and people want to see that. They want to see you actually out in the field showing them what the experiences are that they can travel here for. Exactly, right. Mm-hmm. Yep. And even probably armchair travelers <laughs> who are at back home are saying, "Wow, that looks really awesome." Mm-hmm. So, I know that PR marketing and certainly social media have changed drastically over the course of my career. Um, tell me about the techniques you're using that you might not have even been using four years ago. I mean, probably the stories is one example. Yeah, stories is, but I think the main thing that I want to focus on here is how social media has really grown to paid. So I, when I first started out, was just doing organic native, like I said, but it's really growing into social media advertising. So as an agency, we are um, actually going through classes with social media examiners. So that's been really helpful in learning how to um, really focus on advertising. Yes, and I see this as a major area of growth. And I'm so glad that you and Greg and Emma are going through these classes with Social Media Examiner, Mm -hmm. because I feel that this is an area where Marshall Communications with our you know, long history of storytelling Mm -hmm. can even extend our audience and engagement further. So I'm really excited about that. Mm -hmm. So Megan, what have been some of the obstacles to success in your career? And how have you overcome them? The biggest obstacle in general for PR marketing and social media is the fact that it's ever changing. You could wake up and there could be a new social media tool, um, a new way to market your um, business. So you always have to learn new ways. And just like social media, like you were talking about with the techniques like Instagram stories, that might have not been there a few years ago. And now it's a huge thing. So you have to learn how to adapt. Sometimes people can get frustrated with social media, frustrated with different um, technology. And you just in this career, you really have to learn those techniques and learn how to adapt to your business. Well, it's interesting you say that because um, I recently interviewed Chip Carey, who was my boss at Sugarloaf in the 1980s. <laughs> I know it's a long time ago, but one of the things that he emphasized was even back then, and that's a long time ago, uh, he was emphasized, emphasizing using technology. And I had to learn DBase 3 Plus, which is almost like a coding language uh, for, for keeping track of databases. And he was always on me to stay on top of technology as related to communications. And I feel that, uh, you know, that's kind of the premise of this whole podcast is that you have to know how to engage with people both in person and online. And I feel that people who are of my generation need to, we need to push ourselves to learn what's going on online. And Uh, Obviously, you help us learn that kind of stuff. But I feel that people of your generation also need to know how to engage in person and do some of the old fashioned things like talk on the telephone. (laughs) 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 And, you know, properly meet someone face to face. So I think that's a skill that you brought to the table, too. Because I know that, you know, when you flew in from Michigan to meet Charlene and me that time, that must have been a little bit intimidating. Mm -hmm. But you handled it with ease, and I was very impressed with that. So congratulations. Oh, thank you. (laughs) Yes, so I do, working in social media, I do like being behind a computer screen and a phone. But I have learned to adapt for PR and marketing, getting out there, answering the phone if I need to talk to a journalist. Um, And public speaking, Public speaking, that's always been one of my fears, but I still do it. So you have to adapt. Right. That's the only way you're going to grow. Exactly. I mean, and I even at this point in my own career, I still have to push myself every day. So I think that's the key to success in marketing and PR is considering yourself to be a lifelong learner. Mm -hmm. And um, 
for me, that keeps it really interesting. So, it does. There's yeah. always something new. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, we're going to continue with our conversation with Megan shortly, but I just wanted to share some exciting news with you about how you can connect with me about the podcast. Um, if you're a member of PR Maven Nation, this is going to be really great. We have created the PR Maven Nation podcast listener line. So you can now call into 207 620 9075 and get in touch to ask me questions, share feedback or ideas for the podcast, including who you would like to hear on the show as future guests. And we will be playing those recordings on the podcast. So now if you have any thoughts or ideas that you want to share with me, call into 207-620-9075. We'll have that number in the show notes as well. But right now, we're going to take a quick break, hear about the Marshall Plan, and we'll be back with more in just a moment. This podcast is all about growing your network in order to strengthen your brand. In my 30-plus year marketing and PR career, I have seen many organizations waste their precious time and money on marketing because they're trying to obtain success without any strategy to achieve their goals. So many organizations and companies suffer from what I call the shiny object syndrome, trying every new fad that comes down the pike. That's why I created the Marshall Plan 15 years ago. We have done over 100 of these plans for clients, helping them to get out of their day-to-day routine to identify their goals solidify their brand story, focus in on their ideal customer avatar, analyze their strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, and create a realistic budget and measurement dashboard. We create the Marshall Plan collaboratively with our clients over the course of three months. We have a 65-step process to create a highly customized, actionable plan. And it's not like we come in and say, we are the consultants from away and we know everything. Instead, we come in and say, let's sit down at the table with your leadership team and we'll bring our expertise in what's working in PR and marketing. And our client team brings their knowledge of what's working in their organization. And together, we come up with a really amazing plan. For many, it's been a transformative process. I have watched how teams have come together and their faces light up because they have such a sense of accomplishment and they're so excited about the future of their organization. We help our client figure out the best way to implement the plan, sometimes using people within their organization and sometimes with our help. We would love to chat with you about how you can expand your network and achieve your marketing goals with a Marshall Plan. Go to marshallpr.com slash marshallplan to learn more about the process, or better yet, send me an email at nancy at prmaven.com, and we'll set up a time to talk and get started. And now back to our conversation. Welcome back. And today we're talking with Megan Crowder, who is account manager and social media specialist at Marshall Communications. First, I want to mention that it's now time for our book and things to do pad giveaway. So to win a copy of my book, PR Works, and a PR Maven Nation things to do pad, which is a highly coveted item with my bitmoji and a graphic of PR Maven Nation. They're really kind of fun. And those of us in PR, we all kind of have this love of like making lists and then checking things off. And even some of us are a little OCD. And after we've finished a thing, if we didn't have it on our list, we put it on our list so that we can just put a check mark next to it. Anyway, if you want one of those things to do pads, uh, go to prmaven.com slash giveaway, and you could be our next winner. So now we're going to get back with Megan. I have to just mention. I am so proud of Megan. She's been with Marshall Communications now for four years, and I have watched her growth. Uh, 
She definitely is a, a lifelong learner. And I mean, her skills seem to improve every single day, uh, the things that she can do. And, and her uh, work ethic is very, very impressive. And I just love that because, you know, you kind of have to be on all the time to be successful in this career. So uh, Megan, one of the things that you're really good at is actually the analytics and the measurement related to social media. So how do you measure success in PR, social media, and marketing? So everything we do at Marshall is measurement driven. We're not going to do something just for the heck of it. We are going to be measuring everything. There's different tools that you can measure for each platform on social media. But to scale it all the way back is we do monthly reports for all of our clients. So one of the main um, things that I usually do is our social media um, section of the monthly report. So we set those goals with our client to start out with, and then we measure by a month to month basis. But that doesn't mean that I'm not looking at the analytics every every day, day to week, see how we're doing, what can we do better, what's not working, what's working. So yes, yeah, so we are measuring every day. Yeah, well, and that's great. And I think that's a skill that uh, a lot of business people should learn and maybe even just sort of a quick measurement technique. So I think in the show notes, we'll provide uh, an example of one of our measurement dashboards and some hints on how even individuals can gauge whether it's worthwhile for them to engage on various platforms or not. And as you said, it's all about serving your audience and providing the kind of content that they're looking for. And that might vary from one platform to the next to the next. Yes. And your measurement is really focused on those objectives and goals that you set um, to start out with. So it's not going to be the same for one client or to the next client. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, that's one of the things about our Marshall plan process is that we create a really customized strategy according to what the client's goals are. Mm -hmm. And then after we're measuring each month, we reassess and then we could even set new goals for the next month and then new measurement. So looking at different things. Right. And yeah. that's kind of part of the whole philosophy of, of social is like test and learn. You can learn so much from how people are, are using your content and engaging with your content. That's one of the things that I love. Yes, me too. And with a new technique. So um, once Instagram stories was introduced, we never used that before. So we tested it out and then it went crazy. <laughs> so um, learning how to measure those new techniques. Right. And it, it's just so much more satisfying than maybe more traditional forms of advertising because you can see the results. You can see the engagement uh, immediately as soon as it goes live. So I love that. That's the best part. Yeah, I know. Instant gratification. Yes. <laughs> so Megan, most successful people have a network of fans and followers, either online or in person or both. How have you built your network of fans and followers? And has it been a conscious goal? Or has it happened on its own? Personally, I've grown my network by going to networking events, um, being active on social media, and just being in the community. So not only am I an awesome social media and PR pract practitioner in Augusta, but I also am a swim instructor, and I now teach spin classes at the local KVYMCA in Augusta. So I think being out in your community and really um, networking helps so grow well, your grow your fan base. I was so happy when you moved to Augusta, and uh, I was able to help you, uh, you know, meet people at the Y. And now you've kind of like made that Y your place, and um, it's just a wonderful YMCA. And uh, I know that Tom, who's the executive director there, Tom Warren, loves to have you as part of that community. And I know that a lot of people uh, have entrusted you with their children to teach them to swim and. And the spin classes, that's awesome. I can't wait to take one of your spin classes. Yes. So that's every <laughs> Thursday. <laughs> Small plug. Yeah, every right. Thursday at 5.15 a.m. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Come spin with me. 5.15 <laughs> a.m. Oh, boy. <laughs> but I think that it really is just about getting yourself out there. And for our clients, we are um, always monitoring Twitter. So Twitter is a really good network tool. And especially for PR marketing, that's where journalists live. 
they're always on there. So I make sure that I, I'm checking Twitter lists. So I do create Twitter lists of um, potential journalists that I want to be in touch with um, in different social media people out there that I want to grow my network with. So yeah. creating a Twitter list and then I check that about two to four times a day. Wow. Yeah. Twitter is one of the social platforms that a lot of people find sort of daunting because they don't really understand it. And I think, yeah, one of the keys is to create lists. And um, I'm glad that that's something you're doing. I think it's one of the secret weapons in public relations today that um, that we're doing. And I'm, I'm glad we are. Me too. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> you get to really learn people, but learn who people are. Right. By exactly. Being on Twitter, so. Yeah. Now, how has your network helped you to advance your career? It really is all about who you know. So networking um, creates those lifelong relationships. So even though you start a relationship with someone and it's not um, it's not professionally focused sometimes, but in the long run, it can be. So you never know. You never know who you're going to meet. And it's really helped me grow myself in the community um, and learn new things. I'm always learning, like you said, so... Well, I'm so glad you feel that way because that's one of the things I have always loved about this profession. And I think that uh, part of it is, you know, honoring each person you meet and meeting them where they are. And, you know, as you said, you do, never do know where any relationship will lead. And as you know, I've been involved over the years with the Trek Across Maine spinning class at the YMCA. And I've had so much fun, um, and we've worked with the Trek Across Maine professionally as well. So mm -hmm. that's an example of something that I've done personally, but it also has uh, led to professional engagement as well. So I think it is important to meet people uh, in a lot of different networks. Mm -hmm. So is there a resource such as a book, a website, or an app that you have found to be helpful, and why? Right now, the resources that I'm using, I love newsletters. So I follow the Daily Carnage. Um, I also read the Skim every day. So those are two newsletters that I um, love getting in my inbox. But I also am a part of their Facebook groups. So the Daily Carnage has a Facebook group that I love. I have instant notifications set. So I see when someone posts something. And if it's relevant to me and my career, I'll go look at it. But I'm not always on there. But um, I also think that the Facebook help. So if you ever have a question um, and you don't know the answer right away, just look it up on Google yeah. and then look it up on Facebook help and you'll find it. Yep. Yeah. It's amazing the, the kinds of the variety of content that's available to mm -hmm. us out there. What would be your one piece of advice for someone starting their career? Step out of your comfort zone and know your strengths. So I came into Marshall Communications and I told Nancy and Charlene, I know social media and I want to do social media. And I knew that was a strength of mine. So not only was I willing to learn new techniques for PR, mar PR and marketing, I knew that I could really excel in social media. So definitely know what you're good at and step out of your comfort zone with other things that you need to strengthen. That's great. Yeah, absolutely. And Again, I'll say that I just have always loved your grit and persistence and tenacity, and um, I appreciate that. I think that's that's the key to success. Thank you. Megan, what is one parting thought you would like to share with PR Maven Nation? Get comfortable being uncomfortable. That's my favorite term. You need to step out of your comfort zone and really go after what you want, and that is personal use, professional use both. Um, try new things and always be willing to learn. That's right. Well, I agree. Absolutely. And I admire you so much for your positive attitude. So as always, my final question is to help PR Maven Nation connect with you. What are some of the best ways our listeners can get in touch with you and follow your work online? You can connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, my Email is mcrowder at marshallpr.com. I'm always on there, so you can get in touch with me there. Also, I'm on Twitter as Megan Crowder, and I'm also on Instagram, too. Yeah, when you are, as we've heard, you're on there all the time, so that's great. Well, thank you so much, Megan. This has been such a pleasure, and uh, I just can't 
wait to see what happens uh, as we go in the future. Thank you, Nancy. That's it for this week's episode. I'd like to thank you for listening. And if you feel that you've gotten value out of today's conversation, consider leaving a five-star review on iTunes or whatever app you're using to tune in. If you haven't subscribed yet, you should do so. I release a new episode each week and subscribing will make sure you get an alert when there's a new episode. You can also join the PR Maven Nation by going to prmaven.com slash nation and clicking join. It's free and it's a great community of like-minded individuals who are all looking to learn and grow from one another. If you have an Alexa-enabled device, be sure to add the PR Maven Marketing Minute to your daily flash briefing menu. Thanks again for listening and have a great rest of your week, PR Maven Nation.